Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. We've talked before about how the uh, subscription model is creeping into a lot of things, such that uh, you might buy a car but have to pay a subscription fee for certain features to work. Every time I mention this, there are people out there who actually argue and say, Steve, that is not happening. This is just nonsense. Well, it is happening. If you don't believe me, you can find it all over the Internet. And uh, here's, here's the interesting one. Chris sent me notes, and Steve, check this out, from Bloomberg. Apple is working on a hardware subscription service for iPhones. Mark Gurman wrote it, and that's the question. What would happen if Apple were to say, we're no longer going to sell iPhones, we're going to rent them or lease them, and you can pay a subscription fee for the iPhone, but you don't own it. So Apple Inc. is working on a subscription service for the iPhone and other hardware products, a move that could make device ownership similar to paying a monthly app fee. And this is according to people with knowledge of the matter. If you Google this, you'll find several articles on it in other locations as well. The service would be Apple's biggest push yet into automatically recurring sales, allowing users to subscribe to hardware for the first time rather than just digital services. But the project is still in development, and uh, the people who are talking about this ask not to be identified because the initiative hasn't been announced yet. Apple shares climbed to a session high after Bloomberg reported on the news because a lot of stockholders think, oh, <laughs> this will be printing us money. And uh, they closed up 2%, though the stock is still down 2% for the year. Apple has now posted eight straight days of increases, which is its longest streak since November. Uh, adopting hardware subscriptions would be akin to an auto leasing program, would be a major strategy shift for a company that has generally sold devices at full cost outright, sometimes through installments or with carrier subsidies. It could help Apple generate more revenue and make it easier for consumers to stomach spending thousands of dollars on a new device. Uh, already, the iPhone is Apple's biggest source of sales, generating nearly $192 billion last year, more than half of the company's revenue. A spokesperson for the company in Cupertino, California, declined to comment. The idea is to make the process of buying an iPhone or an iPad on par with paying for iCloud storage or an Apple Music subscription each month. Apple is planning to let customers subscribe to hardware with the same Apple ID and App Store account they use to buy apps and subscribe to services nowadays. Um, I actually have an iPad. It's very rarely on camera, but it's actually right here. It's an older iPad, and I only use it as a, as a clock, a stopwatch, so I can glance at the corner of my eye. And if you see me looking this way, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the clock to see how long I've been talking for. <laughs> I also do a show on My My TV. And I put a normal clock on that so I know what time of the hour it is. And one of the most annoying things is, is I've only used it for that purpose for the last five years. It's all I've used it for. I literally shut it off at the end of the videos. And, and the next day I come back in and turn it back on. And every single day during the show, this warning pops up and goes, please re-enter your Apple ID. I'm not even sure if I have an Apple ID or if I did what it was. But I can simply say no and it goes away. But it pops up every single day, and it's annoying. <laughs> and I'll admit, I'm not an Apple guy. It's the only Apple thing I own. It's the only Apple thing I've ever owned, as far as I know. And it keeps telling me I need to re-enter my Apple ID, even though I own it outright. And all I'm using it for is a clock. I mean, I mean, I mean you know, am I subscribed to the clock service or something? <laughs> so uh, this program that they're talking about, that is the iPhone rental, uh, would differ from an installment program in that the monthly charge wouldn't be the price of the device split across a certain number of months. So right now you might say, well, I buy a phone and I pay a monthly fee on it because I'm buying it over time. It's not what they're talking about here because the, in that scenario, when you pay the phone off, it's yours. They're talking about just saying, no, you pay this much a month and it just stays that way the entire time you own the phone or until you get a new one. They would... Uh, have a yet-to-be-determined monthly fee that depends on which device you choose. Company has discussed allowing users of the program to swap out their devices for new models when fresh hardware comes out. The question is, how easily will they let you do that? So let's suppose you started leasing, uh, you know, renting an iPhone, and they announce a new phone like two months later. Can you very simply just go, oh, I want that one now? 
Could you, could you do that? Or will they lock you in for a certain number of months? Uh, historically, Apple releases new versions of its major devices, including the iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch, about once a year. About once a year. Apple's been working on a subscription program for several months, but the project was recently put on the back burner in an effort to launch a buy now, pay later service more quickly. Nonetheless, the subscription service is still expected to launch at the end of 2022, but could be delayed into 2023 or end up getting canceled if too many people complain. Bloomberg reported last year that the company has been working on a buy now, pay later service for all Apple Pay transactions. Companies had preliminary discussions internally about attaching the hardware subscription program to its Apple One bundles and Apple Care technical support plans. Apple launched the bundles in 2020 to let users subscribe to several services, including TV Plus, Arcade Music, Fitness Plus, and iCloud Storage for a monthly fee. The subscriptions would likely be managed through a user's Apple account on their devices, through the App Store, and on the company's website. It would likely also be an option at checkout on Apple's online store and at its physical retail locations. Apple accounts are typically tied to a user's credit or debit card. The uh, iPhone maker wouldn't be the first company to push hardware subscriptions. Peloton, of course, and I've mentioned I own a Peloton, um, has a subscription service. They recently started testing a subscription service that lets consumers lease the bikes and fitness content Uh, And Google has also tried a similar approach with its Chromebook laptops targeting corporate customers. So in my case with Peloton, I bought the bike and I pay a monthly fee to use the program. But apparently they've also now said, well, if you don't want to spend all that money on the bike, we'll get the bike to you and you just pay us a monthly fee to use the bike for however long you want to do it. Apple has offered several installment programs in the past to split up the cost of devices, though not with a subscription model. In 2015, the company launched the iPhone Upgrade program financed through Citizens One personal loans that let users spread the cost of an iPhone over 24 months and upgrade to a new model every 12. It also lets Apple Card users divide the cost of an iPhone or Apple Watch over 24 months or an iPad or Mac over 12 months. Wireless carriers offer several monthly installment programs as well. The new approach could make existing services less appealing, A subscription program tied to an Apple account would likely be simpler to manage than a carrier program or even the installment plans to the Apple Card. Some on Wall Street have previously urged Apple to switch to a subscription model. Uh, One analyst pitched the idea of hardware subscriptions in 2016, saying at that time that it could help Apple get to a $1 trillion market valuation. Apple hit that milestone without going to subscriptions. It's currently worth $2.84 trillion. But the uh, analyst recirculated his report on Thursday. (laughs) Compared with Starbucks coffee or a New York Times subscription, the iPhone is a bargain, he said. Many customers would struggle to think of a single possession they use more than their iPhones. Moreover, the cost of the iPhone is a relative bargain compared to other services for which consumers willingly pay. But the question is, how many services will they willingly pay for before they finally start pushing back? And I think that it's much harder to take something that has been a traditional ownership product and say, okay, now we're turning that into a subscription. Um, I think with software, more people kind of understood it. And I'll tell you right now that this video that you're watching was edited using Adobe Premiere. And I've used Adobe products for years simply because I like them and I got to know how to use them. And so I'm not a wizard with Adobe Premiere, but I use it and it is a subscription model. Now, I have Adobe Photoshop that I had the full-blown model of it before they went subscription. And I still have that. But updates and things of that nature are going to cost me if I want to use it. I don't use Photoshop that much anymore. But I use the Adobe Premiere, and I pay a monthly fee for that. And somehow it makes sense to me that a software program like that might be subscription-based because, among other things... They're constantly updating it, constantly. And I mean, you know, that's one of the things. Think how often software gets updated, and that's because the developers are constantly working on it. And so if they were to sell it to you and give you the upgrades for free, which I know they did in a long time, you know, in the, in the past, uh, that's one thing. But for them to just say, no, pay us this fee on a monthly basis, and the upgrades are just included in that fee, that makes more sense to me. But when it comes to a product, now I understand people lease automobiles. They'll lease a car 
So they have a car for 24 months. At the end of the lease, they turn it back in or they buy out the lease. But either way, they, 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 they have this thing where it's like I'm paying for something that technically I don't own, but I get to use it. But I think there's going to be a much, much bigger pushback on phones uh, for two reasons. One of which is they've always been something you could buy. And so you have to get people to get into the paradigm of this is now something that you subscribe to, but you don't own it. But the bigger problem, I think, with a phone is I think it's so personal that most people view their phones as something very, very personal. And when the guy who is the analyst mentioned how much people like their phones, revere their phones, uh, it's, it's actually very, very intimate when you consider your phone. So you have a cell phone that you used to make phone calls back in the old days. And over time, it has taken on more and more tasks as part of your life. People can email you. They can text you. They can message you. You can surf Facebook. You can surf the internet. You can run all kinds of apps on it. You can watch videos on YouTube on it. There's all kinds of things you can do with it. But a lot of it is personalized to you. So if I were to hand you my phone and you handed me your phone, Number one, your phone looks so different from mine simply because of which apps you have, okay? And then number two, I've loaded onto mine the apps I want to use. And presumably you've loaded onto yours the apps you want to use. And mine's loaded with all my personal photographs, for instance. You know, and so like I'm trying to remember how far back this current phone goes. I think it goes back about four years, three or four years. Yeah, it's an old phone. <laughs> but I've got photographs so I can scan through there and go, oh yeah, last summer I went here. There's all my photographs. Well, summer before I went here, all, it was all my photographs and all my emails and all my texts. And it's very, very personal. And so I think the idea that you are simply subscribing to something that is that personal to you, I think is going to cause a lot of people to, to, to have some pushback on this. And I, and I think it makes complete sense. Now, whether that'll st stop Apple from doing it, I don't know. Apple has one of the most loyal groups of consumers who support them that have probably ever existed in the history of consumerism. And the only other company that's close is Tesla. So Tesla has got loyal consumers and Apple does too. So there's a good chance a lot of people are going to go, well, it's Apple. I like Apple and you know I'll do this. And Apple will probably find some ways to, to pretty this up and pitch it better. But I have a sneaky feeling that a lot of people who even are Apple fans are going to go, I don't know, this is still a little bit too much. So we'll see what happens. But as of right now, word on the street, from Bloomberg at least, and Mark Gurman, Chris sent it by the way, is that Apple is working on a hardware subscription service for its iPhones. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Exploration is a wonderful way to open our eyes to the world and to truly see that impossible is just a word.